Hello and welcome everyone. Today I would like to clarify and explain some common misconceptions about peak irradiance and dose in the industrial UV curing world that still persists to this day. Recently, one of our partners stumbled across this again while working together with us on a process solution, and I thought I'd share their experience to our all benefit. My name is Simon Reisman. I work here in beautiful Oregon in the United States as a member of the Frozion technical marketing team at our manufacturing plant. If you have comments or questions in response to this presentation, please feel free to email me via simon.reisman at frozion.com. So as I already mentioned, recently one of our industrial partners approached us when developing a label printing machine with the goal to run at 800 feet per minute. Upon talking to our global sales team to determine the form factor and electrical requirements for this project, Forzion eventually did recommend the FJ605 20 watt per square centimeter. As is always the case in the competitive UV LED market, our customer was also simultaneously testing other UV LED curing lamp manufacturers. As you can see in the bar graph shown below, many of these competitors did have similar peak irradiance specification when compared to Fosion. One well-known competitor had an even higher peak irradiance, see the supplier D below, when you compare it to the FJ605 20 watt per square centimeter shown on the right. Naturally, our customer assumed that the lamp of supplier D would perform best when approaching the very limits of their printing speed. To our partner's surprise, not Fosions, I might add, our UV LED system significantly outperformed the competition even when operating at less than 100% intensity. While the competition skewering systems left a light tacky feel, the customer reported that our Fosion system fully cured, even with a lower intensity setting. After this surprise, the customer measured the dose with the radiometer at 800 feet per minute. You can see the test results on the bar graph in orange shown below. The customer found that Fosion delivered almost twice the dose when compared to the competition, meaning almost twice as much energy was transferred to the print at the same comparable process speed. So is this black magic? Is Fosion underrating the peak irradiance or worse? Are competitors lying on their spec sheets? No, I don't think either is the case. Reality is that in the early days of UV LED, peak irradiance was always associated with the most power and energy transferred and quite frankly, the best cure. Peak irradiance was king. And to some extent that was and is not unreasonable. We know that a certain peak irradiance or flux density is still required to get the chemical process and the photo initiator started to activate polymerization. But LED lamps have gotten so strong that getting the necessary peak irradiance for inks and coatings is not an issue anymore. Nowadays, the question is not if UV LED cures, but rather how fast I can go with it. And this is where dose or the total energy transferred per time unit determines the maximum curing speed. In this example here, I've shown the theoretical short axis profiles of three types of LED lamps. You can clearly see that the green graph, for example, number three, has the highest peak irradiance, while example two and one trailing with 15 uh, and respectively 12 volts per square centimeter. The total energy delivered to the substrate is however the area under these curves. So when we rank these lamps by dose, suddenly example two is the clear winner while example three has significantly less dose since the short axis profile is much narrower. The key takeaway here is that high peak irradiance does in no way guarantee the highest dose. Without knowing the short axis profile and the weight of the lamp output, a dose estimate is in fact very difficult. In this context, I would like to mention Fosion FL400 and FL440 water-cooled products. The FL400 shown above has a peak irradiance of 24 watt per square centimeter with a 20 millimeter wide window, while the FL440 has a peak irradiance of 16 watt per square centimeter, but packs a 40 millimeter wide window. Looking at the ray tracing simulation profiles, it becomes clear that while the peak irradiance of the FL400 is significantly higher, 
the total power or the volume under the intensity surface is almost double with the wider FL440. The comparison here shows 675 watts versus 1215 watt at 225 millimeter length. Showing the short axis profiles of both lamps emphasizes the wider, flatter peak of the FL440 versus the more peaky FL400. Again, it becomes clear that the dose or area under the curve for the FL440 is significantly larger, emphasizing that the FL440 is an excellent choice for high-speed cure applications. By the way, Fosion offers the same 40 millimeter wide windows for air cooled lamps as well, with the FJ240 shown here in the middle. While the well-known FJ200 with a 20 millimeter wide windows offers higher peak ratings than the FJ240, the FJ240 clearly dominates in terms of dose, as you can see on the below graph. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening in. Feel free to contact me via comments or questions. Until next time.